these days people spend lots and lots of money just to buy a computer that will play the newest most awesome games. However, the keyboard and mouse you see in front of me when coupled with another device can be used to play awesome games like Half-Life. Yeah, this will get its own review. And so will the keyboard and mouse, but today we're focusing on what they connect to. The Sega Dreamcast. Oh yeah. So why exactly is the Dreamcast one of my favourite consoles? Well, I'll show you. It's quite original. Um, I mean, this was released when the... Well, before the PS2. And it has several things that the PS2 just didn't have. I mean, for instance, four controller ports at the front. The... Um, you know, the advantage of this was that you could have four players without having to buy any other peripherals. Which I suppose, you know, was better for us, but not so good for the company. <laughs> they didn't make a lot of money. And um, I, know, I know the Atari 5200 had this as well. But for me, at least, this is the first time it worked properly because it had proper four-player games that were actually enjoyable uh, as compared with the Atari 5200, which was a, an awful console for morons. So uh, on the back here... You have uh, your standard uh, ports, of course. And uh, the interesting thing about this port here, the AV out, you can buy a VGA box which will allow you to play your Sega Dreamcast games in high definition. Uh, that was an inbuilt function in the Dreamcast. They were ready for this. And I think that, that just goes to show they were thinking ahead. But unfortunately, this unit didn't sell very well. I think it might have been in last place uh, in the PS2 Xbox Wars. But, I mean, they were released after this console. And I, I don't know why it didn't do so well. Uh, you got a... Uh, an inbuilt, well, I shouldn't say inbuilt, it's actually detachable modem that would allow you to play online games. And it actually worked really well. You can still play online games. You can buy a LAN adapter for this or a, a broadband adapter. But uh, it's probably not worth it now. It's a lot of hassle to play and you may as well get the PC ports. But nevertheless, it's still nice. I'd like to try it one day. So uh, the unit's quite small. Uh, it's thicker than the Atari that I showed you before. But, yeah, it's not as sturdy, I don't think. It's a lot heavier, and you do have cooling in there, which some people would find worrying, but I'm sure, I'm sure it doesn't mean anything. I mean, it's not going to red ring on you or anything. This unit's probably 11 years old now. It still works fine. Another thing to note with this unit is that on the front here, I don't know if you can make it out through the terrible resolution, but it says, compatible with Windows CE which meant programmers could really utilize the hardware, they could make Windows applications for this. Obviously they were uh, bespoke for the hardware, but they were pretty good. And you can still get applications being made today, as well as games, but most of the games released are 2D space shooters. And I don't know about you, but I think there are more than enough of those. So that's, that's the unit itself, there's not a lot to it. Um, it has a lot of special features, as you've seen. And I love... So now we've established my undying gay love for the Dreamcast, uh, what, if anything, do I not like about it? Well, here's the first thing. The massive controller. It's almost as big as the unit itself. It doesn't really hold up to an Atari Jaguar controller, because that's a lot bigger. But this thing, I mean, it's it's still pretty big. Um, one of the main drawbacks for this thing, at least to me, is there is only one thumbstick, which means if you want to move and aim up and down at the same time, it's a big problem. Most games utilize these buttons here, Y and A, to move forwards, and uh, the thumbstick to aim. It really doesn't work. You do get some shoulder buttons, but that was standard by then, I think. I mean, the PS2 had it, the Xbox had it. Um, if this didn't have it, then it would probably been far worse than it actually is. Uh, inside here, you get a VMU, or virtual memory unit, and this thing's pretty cool. It's, uh, it stores your game uh, saves as well as gives you heads up information on the screen here. So, um, I mean, for instance, in Soul Calibur, it gives you a little sprite of your character. It's pretty cool. You can actually play games on this. There's a little touchpad here. And there's also uh, an A and B button, sleep and mode. The biggest problem with this thing, however, is the internal battery. It doesn't recharge. You have to replace it with a button cell battery. And they tend to die, and it just makes a horrible, horrible beep when you turn it on. Uh, I might get some footage of that later. But uh, no, this isn't a very good design. It was pretty cool to have, you know, a second screen. But it's just dot matrix. It's not very good. And, you know, it's just not a very good controller. Uh, to be honest, the only other thing I can think of that I don't like about this console would be the Sega Bass Fishing fishing rod. Because that really was useless. Uh, I, I can see the appeal to people who like bass fishing. But if you want to go fish bass, do it outside. You can't shoot people outside because that's wrong. 
but bass fishing is fine. So it's a pretty cool console and I like it. So this is the last thing I want to show you guys before you uh, you know, go away and play a newer console that isn't the Dreamcast. This is a typical Dreamcast game. This is a good example because what I was saying earlier was that they're still making games. This Half-Life was never actually released, only a beta version came out. And uh, through an awesome shop on the internet, which I will link in the description, you can still buy it. And, you know, this guy, he prints out pristine cases, he, he has, you know, he even has the end label for this game. It's pretty cool. Um, this is what a game box looks like. This is a double box, so they don't all look like this. I mean, usually they have a manual, but I didn't pay for the manual, so I'm cheap. This is what a game looks like inside. Just a standard disc, but the, the Dreamcast did use GD-ROMs, which is basically a high-definition CD. Um, kind of sucks. <laughs> because everything else had DVDs and this, this, I don't know what they were thinking making their own format no one else could use, but there you go okay, so you just put this in here with great difficulty turn it on and you're ready to go uh, so that's it, I hope you enjoyed the review and I hope this made you want to go out and buy a Dreamcast